Okay, hi, this is Sherman Werber. This is Francis Buchholz. This is Matthias Jams. This is Ulf Schenker. This is Klaus Meiner of the, the Scorpions. Scorpions. You're watching Rock World on Turn Up the Volume. And there you go. Yay! Great right. house, wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, get out of here. Okay, see Playing music, traveling around the world <coughs> and playing of, of their friends. That's all the Scorpions. Music is very strong rhythm, powerful rhythm and good melodies on top. Uh, and uh, I played in a band called Mushrooms, you know. And not the magic mushrooms, but mushrooms. And uh, Rudolf played with the Scorpions, and we all played in Hanover and around Hanover in the clubs and stuff. And uh, we watched each other closely, and it was a pretty good band. And Rudolf was singing at the time, he was a lead singer. And uh, then I started the band with uh, Rudolf's brother Michael, called Copernicus. And we had rehearsal rooms in the same building, you know, and so we were listening to what they were doing and, and they came to us, hey, what? Oh, that sounds great. And uh, so when Scorpions changed their lead guitarist, uh, Rudolf asked his brother Michael, who was, at the time he was 16 years old, but he was a real good guitar player at the time already, uh, to join Scorpions. And so since Rudolf was singing and he thought this band could need a real singer, you know, so they were asking me, uh, to join Scorpions as well, and that's how we started, and that's how we started uh, writing songs, writing our own material for the first time. They were looking for a bass player, guitar player, and a drummer, okay, and we were looking for a singer, <laughs> so that how it came together. I was picked out of <coughs> 140 guitar players when they were auditioning for a new lead guitar player, and the tiny little kid from Hanover made it, and you know, this was a pretty good thing. We didn't meet at the same time, you know, the band is together since 78 and this kind of people and I joined the band 74 when the old Scorpions who were on the very first record split up and reformed and Klaus and Rudolf were left and my band at that time consisted of a guitar player, myself and a drummer and we three joined with Rudolf and Klaus and formed the new Scorpions for the second album in 74. What is the most memorable moment you've had as a scorpion? Probably the moment I joined. Which I way? guess, which is like now almost 13 years ago. I'm still the, like the new member in the band though. <laughs> but uh, I remember this very well still. I mean, everything else is still memorable as well, but um, it's always hard to pick those things, you know, out of. No, one out of a million. Do you remember making yeah, uh, your first album, the first album you guys ever put together? Yeah, I do. When, where, how, why? That was 1977, <laughs> and the album was called Taken by Force. Taken by Force, where did you guys I record? just joined the band, you know, it was just the new one in the band, you know, three months afterwards. You recorded at Dirk's studio in Cologne. I mean, the best time we had recording was the last album in Los Angeles. We had a great time uh, in Keith Olsen's studio, Good Night LA. And I remember it being in the summer, very hot outside, so we couldn't go outside because it was too hot, you know, with the air conditioning on all the time. <laughs> so after a certain time we had to leave, we go back home, you know, to Europe and have some colder weather and went to a different studio there. But you guys all had little convertible Mustangs, all the same cars, didn't you, when you rented? You guys all rented little Mustangs here. I had a different car. You had a different yeah, car. Yeah, General Motors. So you're saying you went home to get to a cooler place? Yes. <laughs> it was too hot in the summer in Los Angeles. <laughs> I couldn't take it. Well, that, that I forgot. I think we started recording it somewhere around May or June, you know, because I joined the band in May, so no, June, July, yeah. We recorded it in the summer, I don't know. How long did it take you to, do, to make the record? Uh, it took us about three or four months. And then, we, then was the, after that, we did the first tour in Japan. It was the first time we came out of Germany. So we felt like superstars. <laughs> You came right out of Germany straight into Japan? Yeah, because the, the album before, the, the before the album before was called Virgin Killer, and that album was a gold album in Japan. And uh, that was the first time we went out of Germany to go on tour in another country. How, what was the feeling? You felt like superstars, you felt like the Beatles. Do you have a favorite <laughs> album? Oh yeah, time? I mean Blackout is one of my favorites, you know, Love Drive, Blackout, yeah. and the new one of course. I like Blackout a lot because uh, many reasons. First of all, it you know, sounds good, the songs are good, and um, 
There was at the time when Klaus had his voice problems, so we had to take a break for like half a year, and we didn't know if his voice would ever come back. He had to go through two operations and then go through a therapy. He couldn't even speak for like four weeks after the operation, so he had to write things down, and he was already like given up and said, you know, look for a new singer and stuff. But um, it was the band that said, you know, we wait for you no matter how long it takes to give him like the power and tell him, you know, come on, you know, we are friends and we wait for you. And so that's what we did. And so finally, when he could sing again, you know, this turned out to be like a great album, as far as I'm concerned. And so this it makes it very memorable. I believe the last one, Crazy World, is probably my favorite album. And from the older albums, I like from the 70s, I like Virgin Killer. And from the 80s, I like uh, Love It First Thing. You guys have had so many albums out. I was wondering, do you lay at night and think to yourself, what am I going to call this one? You know, there's times. How you come up with all the titles? <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, actually, I'll tell you, especially with this album, I mean, with every Scorpions album, there is like title hell, you know? <laughs> because it's like uh, one day it's, well, let's call it this, you know? And then, yeah, that sounds great. Everybody goes. And then the next time, well, you know, I thought about this last night. But I'm not so I'm not sure about it anymore, you know. Well, and there, there it goes. Say all right, and here comes the next one, you know, and that's the way it is until the very end. Especially with this album, you know, we had a we had a few titles for this one, from Skin Deep to Restless Nights to you know, all kinds of things. And uh, well, in the end, you know, I mean, when you watch uh, the news these days, you know, and they say, yeah, it's a crazy world, isn't it? And uh, since that was a song on the album, so. In the end, uh, we said, okay, let's call the album Crazy One. So you'd heard it on TV and that's where you, you went from there? No, or you no, no. There, you was, there, was, there was a song on the album called Crazy World. You and know? you just and had a lot of titles, a lot of ideas. Yeah. And, uh, well, the decision to be made was like, let's go with some title like Skin Deep and uh, Someday Girls on the cover, you know, or have a title with a meaning, you know. And uh, so since we did. Uh, a lot of uh, naked girls in the past, you know. <laughs> we said, okay, let's go for a meaning because uh, it's been a very crazy uh, world for us in the last two years. And uh, I mean, when you watch out what's happening, you know, with uh, especially for us Germans when the Berlin Wall came down and what's happened with the war at the Gulf. So it's been a pretty crazy world. So you, that could have been. Was there ever one that was like the hardest one to come to, or anyone with an odd story how you came up with a certain title? You just woke up one time, or you ran into something, or anyone that just had an odd. Uh, there are a lot of stories. I mean, they, most of the time they go along with cover stories, you know. And uh, I can tell you one good story, you know. It's uh, when we recorded Savage Amusement. And. Uh, we were looking for, for artwork and for titles. There were a lot of titles. There were, Savage Amusement was around for a while. There was a song on the album called Don't Stop at the Top. So there were ideas uh, for artwork and stuff and to call the album Don't Stop at the Top. And uh, since we worked on Love It First Thing with Helmut Newton, uh, so I saw a picture Helmut Newton did. Um, it was a crocodile, an alligator, you know, an alligator eating up a woman, you know, and you, <laughs> all you could see was the legs from the woman coming out of the mouth of the alligator, you know, and uh, it looked pretty scary, you know, and somebody said, hey, don't stop at the top, you know, <laughs> it was a little, it was a little over the top maybe, but it, it had something, you know, but uh, it's, I called Helmut Newton, you know, I said, hey, how do you like this idea and stuff, and uh, yeah, he said, uh, this could be interesting, you know, uh, but, but then we needed a, a real looking alligator, you know, to do this photo session, you know. And he actually did a photo session, that's what the picture we were looking at. Uh, and it was, a, th there's a theater in Germany, it's a, it's a, a very famous uh, dance theater. And they have a play with alligators involved, you know, with, with dancers and all this. And that's what, uh, where the picture came from. And, and Helmut Newton said, uh, okay, then uh, we need to get this alligator to, to get this photo done, you know. And, but then, to get this alligator and get, with, uh, get in touch uh, with this dance theater and get the alligator, that was a, a 
was such a struggle, you know, it was like, it's a famous cover story, you know, the scorpions and the alligator, you know. And we, we came very close, but then we didn't get it because uh, it's, it's a very special story. Uh, this alligator uh, was in a, in a theater and uh, she just didn't want to use it anymore because it was very personal. And so there was no way to get the elevator and for weeks and weeks because we said, this is a great idea for the cover, we go with it. And for weeks and weeks we tried to get the elevator for this photo shoot with, with Hermann Newton. But we didn't get it in the end, so we ended up with Savage Amusement. <laughs> Instead of Don't Stop at the Top. Oh, there you go. <laughs> you go from beginning to end and name every one of your albums. I could. Do it. Really, you want me to? Yeah. Yeah, are you talking about the albums I've done, I've played with, the or the ones with the b before? The whole kit The whole thing. You want me to do that yeah. without reading them? Name every one of them. Okay, the first one's Lonesome Crow. Um, done in 71, I think released in 72. Next one is Fly to the Rainbow. The colorful rainbow cover. The next one is In Trance. Virgin Killer, Taken by Force. Uh, then comes a live album for Tokyo Tapes and then a change in style since I joined. Um, Love Drive, uh, Animal Magnetism, Blackout, Love It First Thing, and then another live album, Worldwide Life, and then Savage Amusement and Crazy World. I'm not counting any compilations. <laughs> there are many of them. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think, uh, I think we did you here. Oh, you did me? Yes, we did you. <laughs> Favorite video, I would say Rocky Like a Hurricane. Rocky Like a Hurricane? Rocky Like a Hurricane. Everybody's favorite video is Rocky Lake yeah, Hurricane. Yeah. What's your second favorite video? Um, I think Kiss Me, Please Me. What's your third? My third? What, how many we did? Uh, Big City Nights. Big City <laughs> Nights. Maybe the latest one. Uh, well, it's not the latest one. We've done a few in the meantime, sorry. Uh, like Tease Me, Please Me, I remember, because this was the first video we've done where we finished at 8.30. Like instead of like doing videos around the clock, this is what you usually do, and you know, and people see you, you know, basically um, from what you've done at five in the morning, you know, where everybody's really tired, <laughs> you know, so as things take so long, and you want to make sure you get it all done within 24 hours, and so for this video, tease me, please, and we had really everything scheduled in a way that everybody comes in one after the other, you know, makeup different. And, um, you know, so we were done. It was like so quick that we could even like, go to dinner afterwards. A favorite video? I mean, uh, yeah, there's uh, especially when well, I'm sitting in, uh, in Oakland or San Francisco, you know. Uh, actually, the, one of the first videos we ever did, we did here. You know, uh, not so far away from here at Alcatraz. And uh, this video we did is for no one like you as you probably know. And uh, we had a lot of fun doing it, and we were not very much experienced at the time, and we just, we had a concept, we had an idea uh, for no one like you, <coughs> and uh, everybody liked the idea to do it on a real location, you know, instead of in a setup in a studio. And uh, it was such a thrill, you know, to go over there, and uh, we spent there a whole night, you know, and uh, we were working and shooting this video all through the night, and it was real spooky, you know, and it was like the ghost of Al Capone was around. And I remember Francis, he was locked in one of the cells. We forgot him. He, he went for a nap, you know, because we don't <laughs> needed him and he had a break. And he went for in the cell, you know, it was just, you know, yeah, just have a little nap, something. And uh, we moved through the building to some other place. We forgot about him, oh, you know, and yeah. all of a sudden somebody was screaming, Nobody can hear me out there, you know, it's me. Get me out. <laughs> uh, <laughs>